Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of this app. Now as I was saying when we click on login that, that worked. Now what we want to do when we log in we want to usually gather some information about this user so we can use them throughout our application. So the first thing I'm going to do if you go back to the application there is something here under project called model and storage. What is these things? Um, if you're familiar with database, if you're familiar with uh, object-oriented, it's kind of similar to this. So in the model, you're creating a class, if you will, or an object. And this class has, into, uh, it has attributes, or if you want to call it an object, whatever you want to call it, right? So I'm going to create a model called user <coughs> object, okay? User object. You can call it user class, whatever you want to call it, right? User data, whatever you want to call it, okay? And you click on add. What does it, what does that do? Now this becomes an object that you can store information. This is like your model. This is like uh, the blueprint, if you want. Now, when you say user object, you can click add. Now, for our information, I have, for example, user name, right? and I click on add and I want user ID and I click on add and this is full name let's make it full name so it is different than the full name okay so user ID is the same one that you have in the other user you have user type and we click on add. We have another one that is phone number, for example. You can add whatever you want, phone number. Now here is the types. You have Boolean number, array, object. So you can have object with an object. Full name is just a string. Uh, you can have this all, I'm gonna make those all strings, okay? Now, this is the model, okay? Now you have storage, which usually relates to the model. That means now I want to, these are the data. Now I want to save them in my device in some sort of, kind of like a database again. So I'm going to add a new, same thing, users data. So it is different than the model. And then I click on add. Now user data, it is local storage or session storage or window. Okay, what's the difference? Local storage, it's actually on the device. Session isn't as long as your application is running. I'm not sure about window because I haven't tried it. So the type is what? Remember, we created one called user object. So this is that user object that we just created. Okay, so now I have information about that user. I want to add another one, in, which is called session token. Remember that one that uh, comes from the user table when it's successful? Session token is the one that, if it is secure, you have to pass back to the, your app or the server to verify that it is secure. So you click on add, and that is a string. So I have user data, it's an object, and then user session. Okay, let's go back to the main page. And I'll just hide events. Now in the main page, if you look under data, remember this was the service, the login service. When I have the login service, I have mapping. When it's success, we didn't do anything with it, right? But if I click on the body, here's the session token. Now if I click on storage, you'll see that two objects. One object is the user data and has all these attributes in it and that session token which does not belong to the user object so I can just map this with this so I can save it and I can use it in my application okay so save and return all right good now the other part what we want to do if it was successful we want to go to the second table and get the user information from that table Remember, we have in the database, in the database, uh, let's go to the database here. We have, <coughs> we have here uh, this user table, and then we have all this information that we wanted to be able to get to. 
and we use this user ID as my key to tie the two together. So now if I go to, uh, I go back to the app, after it is successful, I don't think we need that run JavaScript anymore because we saw it, it works, so I'm gonna delete it, okay? When it is successful, I want to create another service that goes to the database, get the information from the user information. Okay, uh, but before we, so before we do that, there's one one more step that I forgot. Oh, it doesn't matter. We can do it. We can get it from the page. So here's what we can do here. We go to the, uh, we can create another service. And here we want to call the query service that we created for the my user. Okay. And then click on that. Now, before we send, what do we need? What do we need to do? We need to send the same user ID that the user passed to where? To you have a query here. Now, what does this query do? How do we pass a query to uh, this table? To this because this is depend on the value that we selected. Now, if you're familiar with SQL, this might sound uh, a little bit strange, but this is it uses JSON format. So you give the attribute and the value next to it. So what we have to do, do you see this thing? We have to write a small JavaScript. So I'm going to drag this and drag it here. And when I click on the JavaScript, we'll have to write a small piece of code that return the user ID. I have it already done somewhere, so I'm gonna copy it and I paste it here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know if, let me see if I can zoom it so you can see it. And uh, let me check, make sure that we have the right table name. The user, it's called user ID. All right, the column name is called user ID. So uh, let's go back to that. And then do you see it here? Let me see if I can zoom here, control plus, so you can see it when I come back. What are we doing here? Now, you could have done this in one step. What I'm interested in is in this, okay? I did it so we, for testing purposes. So you put, this is the field you're looking for, user ID, and colon, and then the value. The value is that's the one that we are passing. To it, so this is the value that you get from the uh, from uh, this the page that we're passing to it. So this is your query; it has to be in this format. And I'll just write in. So the output of this would be something like this: user ID, and then colon, and then the value, whatever value we pass. So for example, if I pass Ali, it will be like this. Okay, so that is your query. Now, if you look at the documentation, you can do and, or, you can do less than, greater than, but it is different. If you're coming from an SQL database, uh, from an SQL mentality, this would be a little bit strange. Uh, so that is what we are, this is what we are doing, okay? So the output of this will be that. All right, so to make sure that it is actually that, and I, uh, to make sure that we're doing that, I put it in a variable and I printed it out so you can see what would be what would be the result. Okay. So let's go back to zoom out. Okay. So that is where it goes into the where clause. Okay, now to test it, I should have shown you how we test this in a minute, but let's save it. And uh, Let's go to the database, let's go to that service again to show you how we can test it and what, what we're supposed to get. Okay, here is that query. And remember, this is the request. If you look at the response, these are the fields from the response. Now this is for, what do we call it? Uh, uh, authentication list, I guess. So I'm gonna delete that, we don't need it. 
to test it you see where it says a query so if I type in if I type in remember it was it was user ID and then colon and then if you put Ali and then that and you can click on test here's you got the information for the test okay so it has to be in this format so go back to the page where we're in so let's look at the javascript so we've done that and then click on save save and return okay so that is the before now when we do the success what should happen the success should basically take the request the 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 result that we received and then store it in that user data remember that we created the user data in the storage model and storage so now i can do this i can just full name map it with full name user type map it with user type uh phone i don't phone i map it with phone and then user id i can i don't think we've done that but anyway it might not be anything but user id you got the idea so now this when i when i after successful this this data user data will have all the objects that I need related to that object that 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 user okay so I do save and return all right okay so that's all we want to do with the in regard to, of course you can put error if you want to say like what we did before you can log it to the console or whatever saying that there is a problem with the with the uh, with the username and password and let's change this to say get user info service okay all right and then click on save and re well we don't need to do save and return but let's go back to the login service so when we log in remember we map some information from the user table that comes with every into uh, the session token right then we want to add a call service that means what we want to call uh, we want to call uh, which one we want to go to invoke service and which service we want to invoke we want to invoke uh, get user information right so get user information from here invoke service get user information and click on save all right if you want to test it we can add here user information but let's leave it as that just put like a test now what's the next step the next step is that based on what the user type is i would drive direct them to the right page so this is the first time I do that here in this video. So let's try it. What we're going to do, we want to add another service. Another service here. Let's move this down. Invoke JavaScript. And we click on save. No. Now, remember the information is being saved about the user now in an object called uh user data remember we have an in the data store we have something called user data how do we get how do we access local storage in afri all right i'm gonna try it first and it works i'll be back okay so i'm gonna pause it for a minute okay all right now we got it all to work and then ready to go all right what are we doing here um Remember when we did the invoke service here, we mapped the data we got from the user table into the storage called user uh, data. In Apri, uh, they have some APIs that allow you to uh, allow you to uh, get the data from the storage, and the way you do it, it is. Uh, you use this API, API storage.userdata. Again, let me try to make this bigger. Uh, again, let me to make that bigger. Okay, got, uh, can I make that bigger? All right, here we go. So we have this 
API storage, API O, that storage, that user data. User data is your uh, storage object collection, not collection object. And we say get. So I'm getting the whole object here. Now in that object, I have attributes. One of them is name, user type, and all of that. Just for testing purposes, I got the full name, and then I put it out in the console to see it. And then in addition to that, I got the user data, and the user data contains whether I'm an admin or regular user. Now, here in the if statement, we need to check. If I am an admin, then I go to, uh, if I'm an admin, then I go to the admin page. And here you can do some transition slide up. And if I am, uh, I am uh, a user uh, other than an admin, then it would take me to the general page. Okay. So I'm going to save it and test it for you. Make sure that it works. So if I do uh, save, and let's make it again smaller. Okay, and then let's go and test. Notice here when I do uh, Ali, and then I click one, two, three. We don't have logout button yet, but if I do Ali log uh, one, two, three, it would take me to the wrong one because it should take me to the home page. I tried it on the device and it worked, believe me. So let's close this again and try it. All right. Let me bring in this browser. I'm using Firefox here so you can see the console too. Okay. So here is my application. If I again type in Ali, and then one, two, three, and then do log in. Notice here it says username Ali, and then uh, Omar Home. That is weird. We just fixed it. Okay. Let's try that again. It should take me to admin. Maybe there is a problem. All right. I then one, two, three. I'm in. Is there a problem? Ali Farhan, that is correct. I don't know, maybe there is a delay in the server. But you see that it says, and that's why I don't like to test it on the browser. I like to test it on the phones itself. It's much better. So it took me to the admin page, okay? And if I go refresh again, and then you type in now Omar, and it should take you to the other page. Uh, let's hope it does. <laughs> but I tested it again. See, again here, there's a problem. I don't know, there is a delay of data or buffer, some caching, okay? But if you run it again, it works for some reason. Uh, where and then one, two, three, then log in. Hopefully, it says over. Yeah. No, it says over. Now it took me to the second page. So, there is maybe some caching he was doing, but on the device, it works. Okay, so that we got that to work. So, we can stop in this video again, and the next video will be how we get the data from the user object into the proper pages okay so if i am in the uh, i am in the admin page i want to get some information on the admin page if i am on the general page i will get some information on the general page all right so we will do that in the next video